In the tandem bicycle racing, we thought we'd show you we can do what we say. We're not total pretenders. But here's the problem, keeping the feet on the pedals. Now, for example, if you lose the pedal, like O.J.'s showing here, I would have to stop in order for him to put his feet back on. Now, when you're going about 25 miles an hour on a clay track here at Punahou School, you do tend to get a little excited, don't you? Yeah, yeah. and as you know, one of the strategies is to put the heavier man on front. That explains why Keith is on now, in front here. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> you got to have a lot of courage to sit back here with your face buried in your man's back and hope he leads you into a victory into a right place. It's not the ideal place to carry on a conversation, and it's also not the ideal place to really believe what he says, because, look, he peeled one yesterday, a motorcycle, I understand. That's right. I said the Kansas City, City Royals could have took a lesson from me hook sliding into the sidewalk. <laughs> it was a nice one, believe me. Now let's have a look at the heavyweight team of the Dallas Cowboys. Bill Russell talking to them. Billy Joe, um, you guys are the heavyweights. Um, what's your size? My size right now is about uh, 6'4", 220 pounds. I'm about 8 pounds under what I play at in, uh, during the season. And Ralph is a little bit heavier. I think he's what, Ralph? 250. 250. Well, I understand that the strategy on riding tandem bikes is you put the heavy guy in front. Uh, what's the strategy here with uh, Cowboys? Well, you see, we have this unorthodox uh, procedure here. <laughs> that Ralph supplies the power and I supply the direction. I'm the navigator. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you said about navigation, because um, Ralph, I did see, the boat. yeah, it has had some problems uh, standing in the back of things. Are you worried about uh, if the bike starts to pump release, you know you you lost somebody? Yeah, I know I've lost it. <laughs> I had uh, Bill. I was going to talk about it, talk with him earlier this morning, maybe getting in front. But after I fell out of the boat, uh, I don't think I didn't even bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph Neely, now 34 years of age, and this big guy was a two-time All-America offensive lineman at Oklahoma, consensus in 1964. 13 years with Dallas, 11 playoffs. He has been on two Super Bowl championship teams. He has had a great career. I talked with him about his game of football and what he'll do when he retires. I'll look forward to playing Monday morning quarterback. <laughs> and I've got a good job to go to, so uh, I have no regrets. And it was great to go out as a winner uh, in New Orleans, and I'd like to go out as a winner here in Hawaii. The idea the argument and sometimes the fight over whether or not an offensive lineman is given his fair share in uh, the way they play pro football today. Now that you're stepping out of it, let me hear what you think about it. Well, an offensive lineman is a different breed of person than most people realize in the fact that you've got to be self-motivated. And uh, you don't get a lot of the press, and the press that you do get uh, is generally connected with the yellow flag. So. Uh, but an offensive lineman uh, motivates himself in a job well done or seeing a Tony Dorsett get 1,000 yards in the season or gaining 250 yards rushing. And when I walk in Monday morning knowing that, knowing that I had a lot to do with that, uh, that's, that's what an offensive lineman's about. And he's got a lot of self-confidence, and uh, he's a real stable person. Each team will go one time around this running track. There are no banks in the corners, so it's a place that you must be quite careful. It's a little bit damp, and it's George Brett and Darrell Porter inside for Kansas City. Charlie Waters and Cliff Harris outside for Dallas, and immediately the Kansas City Royals have gone to the lead. George Brett and Darrell Porter jumping off the start line and getting the lead. Now as Waters and Harris pull down behind them on the back straight, let's see if they can close them. They're moving up, Keith. You know, I, I didn't think they'd be going out this hard. The track is a little wet in the, in the, in the warm-up. Everybody was talking about running safe or peddling safe. They look like they're going at it hard. Here. They really are, and most oh. of them may. Oh, now Kansas City, now Dallas. Both teams having a little trouble with the pedals. Here comes Dallas up on the outside as Brett and Porter had some trouble keeping the feet on the pedals. Get it back, though, and at the end of the first lap, Kansas City is going to have a lead. Here goes the second team of Dennis Leonard and Frank White in motion. Now moving it out for Dallas. It's D.D. Lewis, the linebacker, and Robert Newhouse. 422 pounds for the Cowboy team, 381 pounds for the Royals. Kansas City Royals getting out to a pretty good-sized lead. Now here come the Cowboys. It's D.D. Lewis and Robert Newhouse moving up on the outside, and they're going for the lead down the back straight. They've got it. Lewis and Newhouse have taken the lead for the Dallas Cowboys. White and Leonard having trouble with the pedals. They're coasting through the turn. 
And the Dallas Cowboys now building a lead, coming off the turn as uh, White and Leonard let it slide wide. And now Dallas opening up a lead, waiting to go for Dallas. Billy Joe Dupre and Ralph Nita, the big heavyweights rush talk to. John Mayberry and Paul Splitoff for the Royals. Here we go, Billy Joe Dupre and Ralph Neely are tough. We've seen him in practice, we saw him in the preliminaries, and they ride very hard and very swiftly. It is John Mayberry, the first baseman, and Paul split off the left-handed pitcher for the Kansas City Royals. In the meantime, it's Dupre and Neely opening up a big lead. As you know, anything can happen here, Keith. As you know, this race has been won by the team who made the least mistakes. And don't forget, Ralph Neely is the guy who fell off the canoe. <laughs> That's right. And the Cowboys right now, it's Dupre and Neely having some trouble holding the pedals together. And here come the Royals, Mayberry and Splitoff closing down on them. Mayberry and Splitoff riding smoothly have closed quite a bit. They have picked up at least 25 yards on Dupre and Neely, but it is still Dallas holding the lead. And here is the final leg. Roger Straubach, the quarterback, Drew Pearson, the wide receiver, off and running for the Cowboys, and Hal McCray and Fred Patek are doing the chasing. McCray and Patek very light. Hal at 180, Freddie at 157, Straubach 195, and Pearson 177. And the two little men really have to bear down. But it's Straubach and Pearson having a little trouble staying on the pedals. And McCray and Patek are closing some on them, but they still have a big lead. Yeah, you, they're having this trouble in this turn. I think every, that's a bad turn. Everybody stops pedaling over there because it's wet, but Stallback and Drew Pearson, they've worked together so well on the football field. I don't think they're going to lose this. Thing. Now, Hal McCray lost his pedals as he looked like the Royals would be able to close down on the Cowboys. Stallback and Pearson hang on to lead, and they win it. And the Dallas Cowboys go out to a 2 to nothing lead over the Kansas City Royals. And remember, for each event, the winner gets $8,000. The loser, nothing. The team that locked it down for the Dallas Cowboys came in the second leg, D.D. Lewis and Robert Newhouse, as they literally ran down and by Frank White and Dennis Leonard, going way to the outside where it is soft. Lewis and Newhouse just blew them over, and from that point on, the Cowboys had a walk to take their two-to-nothing lead. Now here's Bill with that pair. You know, Dallas Cowboys are known for making big plays. Uh, they stay, they hang tough, and then they make the big play. And you two guys made the big play this uh, bicycle race here. Uh, you guys uh, caught the other team and, um, I mean, really gave it, turned the whole thing around. Uh, how come you guys work so good together? I think it's because we're short and Robert's got the most powerful legs on our team, so that's one good reason. Well, you know, we had it. Uh, we knew we had to stay with him in the curve, because we couldn't do too much in the curve, so we knew we'd get him on the back stretch. But it was just a matter of just digging down and spinning out after him. We went and got him. So after two events, you can score it this way if you like. Dallas, $16,000. Kansas City, none. The obstacle course is next.